to them. We do not want separation. We're not trying to divide the country. What we're trying to do is protect what truly belongs to us because we see that there's a web of people conspiring to take away not only our lands, but to mine them, to also rid the people of their dignity. We are being celebrated for so much, but look, we have no water. We have no infrastructure. Nothing is here to facilitate the people living in dignity. Yet, a million dollars passed under our noses and nobody knew. I brought this to light and I've since come under several attacks. Now, there are other players, people, because we have email trails of Mr. Marshallet, Mr. Williams, Mr. McPherson, and others who you would not dare think would be on that email trail. It must end. Now, recent incident in a compound, which happened two weeks ago. Let me say this and say this clearly. Every chief that comes here spends here five years. And in that five years charted and held accountable for what he would have promised the people and what he would have held, what he would what he would have um, brought, what he would have bring to the people. Right? We have come we have come out of the hole, the trenches. Right. If this election had gone differently, you could write off anything that you would consider a legacy of the Maroons. Right. We would be eventually what we've been played down to be a cultural component of society when we are the culture of the land. I have been here a year and a half and I've faced a year and a half of struggle, of fight of relentless oppression by small few. But a small few who's been empowered, who are being financed by not only local entities, but international entities who are looking at our land, who are looking at our minerals. And it's not only backside people. There's lithium here, there's silica here, right? Let's, let's, let's talk the real things now, right? It's not no backside, right? There's a booming industry in electronic vehicles, right? Watch the media, watch what is happening, right? There's a proposed Silicon Valley of type in Jamaica. Great, great. But how will it be backward integrated? What mechanisms are being put in place to facilitate the supply chain for that industry? Mr. Williams has been Constantly liaising with, liaising, in, liaising with people in the community. I showed you that building around there just now. Belongs to an ex-convict by the name of Dennis Foster, who now resides in the U.S. He's on probation for a seven-year sentence. Mr. Basra has been financed by Mr. Mr. Um, Mr. Foster. And when, came, when I came into office, I must say, Mr. Foster was a good friend of my dad. My dad passed away via car accident in, um, nine, in 1987. By then, Mr. Foster would have migrated would have made his life overseas and would have been caught up, right, in illicit trade, a cocaine, right? After being arrested and charged and on probation at his home with his kids, he, were, he was again arrested for the same thing. This man, right, is now reaching out to us. When we came in, reached out to our administration, positioned himself as emperor of a compound. Mr. Dennis Foster, right? Affiliates of a compound news. I will only say this once, right? And if we did not give them a place in our administration, then they would rage war against us, right? I'm going to talk the things, right? Because Mr. Basra himself, who was a candidate against me in the last election, right? Didn't even get nominated on the day, right? I offered, I offered Dane along with four other um, opponents in that election a position in my council. I gave them an opportunity to serve, even many with blemishes. I gave them a, an opportunity to redeem themselves. Many of them walked away on it, on me. They walked over me. They turned their backs on me. Right? I gave Mr. Bajra the opportunity to represent on the Abeng radio. We have a radio station here, Abeng radio. 
right? He loves the media. He loves attention. He didn't want that. He wants Secretary of State. Dennis Foster from America wanted to be my deputy. We were being held ransom by these guys who claim him and another member of the community have the original treaty in vault under blood oath. So I'm going to put this out there and I'm, I'm going to let you hear and see for yourself, right, what we've been going through. Mr. Basra, three weeks ago, I had an investor here who came to help us with water. They've committed to help us with funding. Mr. Basra injected himself, found the corner to then infiltrate the mine and poison the mind of these people. The lady came to me crying. She doesn't know what happened and why this guy's telling all these things about me. I said, what happened? She explained everything that happened that he was telling me that we're liars and we're criminals and we, we're holding people against their will here and all sorts of foolishness. This has now been picked up by six, seven different bloggers and media houses out there who are spewing my name and this negativity. I watched a video the other day with a young lady sending a serious threat to me. Respect to you. But the will of the people will not be shunned. Not by anyone. Even if you're in here as a maroon. The people spoke. The people chose different. They chose growth. They chose somebody who felt their pain. Who felt their sufferings. And they'll not roll over for that. Not for you, Mr. Williams. Not for your external government affiliations. Not for your bad men and your threats that you try to pull on the people here. It won't work. You're an ex-police officer. You should conduct yourself with such dignity. Because there are many law enforcement officers out there who are working hard to maintain what little dignity is left in recognition of the police force. 90% of the island just the other day expressed their disapproval with how crime is being controlled in this land and managed. But if we sit back I, again, I presented this information to the relevant authorities and we're still, still feeling the pressures of the forces here who are now trying to make me look like I'm holding my people hostage, like me look. I'm trying to change what maroonage is, to let me look like I'm acting against the will of the people. Any action that Chief Curry takes is the action of the full maroon council. We have a body government. So everything that I say and everything that we do is protected by the voice of the people. So let me continue in saying, having brought this information forward, we still have not had any action. We accessed the building last Friday. And having accessed the building Friday, Mr. Williams had since issued a threat, allegedly, that people should not go near this building and anyone who comes near it will face significant consequences. I received a call last week outlining the devious plans that would have been set ahead of this week in an effort to create harm to myself and members of this hardworking community. We had put that out, we've made the report to the relevant authorities the day that we were told that the planned attack would take place, our gate was removed. Yes, it was removed. And we suspect it's by members internally who are still affiliated to former Colonel Williams. We reported this. And guess what happened? The police came here on that night. And they came here. You saw the video I put out. I sent it to the superintendent of police of Black River. I sent it to the Sarge in Silo. I sent it to the Sarge Magati. And when I put that video up, and when I sent the information out, that night, two units came into a compound. Again, without notification. And what they came here for was alleged, alleged threats. Listen to these people. Alleged threats being made by people affiliated with Chief Curry. To members of this community. Oh no, listen to me. When I asked the officer, are you aware I've been in touch with the superintendent since day? Are you aware I've been sharing information? On what he said, no, he hasn't spoken to him and he's not really aware. He's not here for that. He's not here for that. 
Then what are you here for, officer? The eagle man them where I get threat. The eagle man them where I get threat. One of the officers issued a threat upon exiting a compound that wait till him catch one of them down a Santa. Right? Let me say this again, people. The police officer who came here on the information that people really re, people around me are issuing threats to persons having put out the information credible information i have voice notes i have n people i have the information i'm not going to put it out here i'm saying to you if there if there are people out there who want to know more i'm talking the media i'm talking well-thinking minded individuals come to a compound and i will share these with you All the bloggers out there who want to blog, blog, blog and talk, talk, talk. You have no mission in life. You have no mission in life. There are good bloggers there. Please, don't get me wrong. But I'm talking the ones who have their affiliations, who have their political motivations. You cannot harm me. Because what is ordained cannot be stopped. The fact of the matter is, these people are hell-bent with their affiliates including one external party, a man by the name of Dave Reed, who I know now, from what I understand, has gone off making claims that he was held against his will here in a compound. People, Mr. Reed came here under the guise of being a direct contact with the mining company. He's telling us that there's money there for us and that we deserve development. We wanted to understand what Mr. Reed was getting at and what he was proposing to us because it seemed as if what he wanted to do was to continue an arrangement that was already in play before we got here. Mr. Reed came here. We met with Mr. Reed because the dinner that Mr. Reed planned had other intentions behind it. There was an entity that he registered in the United States that he made no one in a compound or in my administration aware of. He wanted to take pictures. He wanted my signature. And his mission, which he already had up on a website, was to go off and engage with international entities on behalf of the Maroons. We have now found out Mr. Reed is an affiliate of the government. We have connections and we have resources and we do use them. There are many good people out there who want to see good for the Maroons and have offered themselves in service to help us. So when I talk, I talk on behalf of those as well who are watching. When we say the world is watching, the world is watching. I've given a statement to the police in Black River. I've given a statement to Mocha in Kingston a year ago. Oh, and let me not forget Jamaica. After making that report to Mocha, I believe it was August of last year, two months later, Mr. Williams was awarded Order of Distinction by the Governor General. So let me remind you, we are standing, looking at an entity that was built with the facilities of monies we suspect have come from illicit means which involves the world's most wanted man who visited here in a compound via private helicopter. This hurts. I'm going to show you something, people. Right? I'm going to open my file empty, right? I'm going to show you something. Stock is not about sovereignty, it's not about nothing, right? But since we're trying to 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 discredit this good administration and the good people who are working behind it. This is the entity which the bank account was um, established under, right? A Compound Development Foundation Limited 2005. This is the company's document which shows, you know, articles and how it was created, etc., etc. It shows the different people who were on it. It also shows the schedule and the objection, ob objectives for which this association is established. Long-term sustainable development of a compound maroon um, village, especially as it relates to the formulation of a 20-year development action plan, right? There's some of the things that's there, right? We talk about argument of 
um maroon sovereignty and all these things let's not let's not let's not let's not sidetrack the argument and the conversation all right because there's a workable agreement that can be arrived at without the, the, the without the dialogue and the, and the focus on sovereignty right because they seem to use that to, to 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 spread their own rhetoric as to what it is we're trying to 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 achieve and what the mission and objective here is look at this document here coming from tax administration of jamaica it says sovereign state of a compound attention sovereign state of a compound there's your trn number right so we have an entity that was registered you go out there and try to register another entity with the name sovereign and you see what happens right this is the name that the bus that was given to us in 2019 by Minister Grange was registered under the sovereign state of a compound. All right? So, I say this to say that. Gentlemen, bless up. I say this to say that. We, the people, choose differently the systems that have been put in place to address the indigenous people of the land do not serve us we live in a land that highlights the efforts and works of indigenous people rastas have been recognized to a particular extent but they still suffer today we still suffer today i have been i've been libeled i've been slandered against on the many things that people really have absolutely no understanding to the depths as to which we have had to go to preserve what we have left. I walked away from a perfectly good job and a comfortable life to come here to be more comfortable, to live a more fulfilling life because I found my destiny was a calling. It was no motivation for no money. There's no money here when I came here. What I knew was going on was some I don't even want to say the word, people, but I'm going to tell you. It did not serve us. We have witnessed where for the last 10 or 11 years, there's been no accountability in this community. No accountability to its books, its people, nothing. The hands externally have manipulated their ways. I'm not focusing and all of this because we know what has been happening my mission has always been dialogue 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 where do we cut the foolishness and get to fruitful dialogue it has never come the last two weeks has been instrumental because one we again made another concerted effort to reach out i did a speech on independence day and really you know I, I envisioned that at this point, you know, having seen where the Prime Minister met with members of the, the Maroon Culture Group in, in Black River and expressed his own considerations as to the relationship that existed here and even went on to say he's committed to come here for January 6th celebration next year. Now, we would have engaged with persons very close to the PM to try and have dialogue since then and all that i'm hearing is that whenever my name comes up he goes in a very dark place no i'm saying i don't have a personal issue with the prime minister what i have is a problem with the relationship that exists and then on top of that the force at which the resentment to this request has come again with all due respect, Prime Minister Honus, I have a fiduciary duty to the people, the Maroon people, who elected and chose me, chose my council, my members, my body government, to represent their will. And if there are people in this community who continue to act on the, on the, on the, on the motivations of external hands and ex-criminals, right? who use their money to fund these illicit structures who are which, are which is unfinished, right? And people here serving them in the people. That are fed to them. 
What good is living a life that is below the potential and the will to which it should be? We are, digni we are dignified people. When the officers came, somebody asked, let me finish that story, right? The officers came and we expressed to them what was happening, the incident with Basil. Let me claim, clear that up, right? Because of what happened when he turned away the investor, she came to me crying, literally crying. She has nothing to do with here. She's not from here. She didn't come here for this. She didn't want to expose her, her, her funders to this. This doesn't make sense for her. You know, at that point, it was very difficult because then I had to lower myself into outlining the dirt that exists here in our community, which we rather not share. But like Mr. Bajra, he will go on the, 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 the Facebook, YouTube, whatever, and he'll air everything he feels he needs to air so long as it has the ability to bring this administration down. He would have been warned on several occasions publicly Right in the square where we have our town hall meetings, right by that light post where you see that little shop there, right? We would have pulled him there twice in town hall meetings to address him and his outburst, right? We would have spoken to him individually, right? Personally. Mr. Bajra sees me, walks, he passes, <laughs> if he walks and he passes me, come and he, he talks. But if he has a problem, or if he feels that there's something else that's there to be said, his medium of getting a note is a challenge. To all the maroon people we would have seen him in, in years gone by been very disrespectful right not only to law enforcement but also to the prime minister <laughs> certainly not to the levels to which <laughs> what is being said and spread around my own engagements with the prime minister mr basra was issued a letter on behalf of the full maroon council which is traditional when we have issues within our communities. These are the structures that we use to support justice within our communities. That is why we've been so safe. When troublemakers are allowed to sit and fester, spread false information, and they bring nothing good to the people nor the community, I will not be here for another three and a half years to try and prove to the people why investors aren't coming to a compound or why we can't get things done in a compound. Mr. Basra was issued his orders. He doesn't live here. He's been catching in that unfinished building for the last three and a half, four years. Mr. Basra has scammed many people of their money here in a compound. Mr. Basra kicked his pregnant spouse and fled to a compound years ago. So when you all are out there jumping on the backs of someone who you think have the interest of maroon people at heart, you are wrong. He's a politically motivated individual who falls under the auspices of Dennis Foster, Ferran Williams, and others externally keen on overthrowing and shaking up my administration. We have a court date September 30. And we've identified that as a timeline. So the pressure has been cranked up. And I want for you to pay attention. The Maroons of Trelawney Town, Cockpit Country, will stand to defend their life, liberty, and property until justice comes to the people. We will not be denied. 84 years of war. 84 years of blood. And yet we still suffer today. We still suffer today. That the said Captain Kojo and the rest of his captains, adherents and men, shall forever, here in after, hereafter, in a perfect state of freedom and liberty, excepting those who would have been taken or fled to them within two years of last pass if such are willing to return to their said masters and owners with full pardon and indemnity from their said masters or owners for what is past, provided always that they, if they are not willing to return, they shall remain in subjection to Captain Kojo 
and in friendship with us according to the form and tenure of this treaty. The Maroons freed people. We did not return people. Those taken would have been those taken from the plantations when we raided. Many chose to go back. Many chose to go back. That if any Negro shall hereafter run away from their masters or owners, fall into, fall into Kodja's hands, they shall immediately be sent back to the chief magistrate of the next parish where they, shall be, where, where they are taken. And those that bring to them are to be satisfied for their trouble as the legislature shall appoint. Why are we returning to their said masters here? And why are we re returning to a chief magistrate here? A chief magistrate is a judge. These are criminals. If a criminal comes into the state and we catch them, we carry them back to the next parish where they are to face the magistrate. That all Negroes taken... That only...